It's Christmas time. Once again, it's that special time of year here at the Inside All Day podcast for our first annual Christmas episode. That's right. Christmas every year. I like it so much. Maybe you should do it twice a year. <laughs> Christmas in July, maybe. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> Christmas in July. You heard it here first. Um, but we're here today to really ask what do, uh, what do Michael Caine and uh, Tim Curry have in common? What? The best Muppet movies. I've never seen Treasure Island. Well, we, you know what? Thank you for adding yourself to the internet. We'll fix that. I've added myself to we'll the internet so much about I movies know. I haven't seen. People at this point, all of our friends are like, yeah, well. Have you seen a movie ever? Ever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like, How do you know so much about movies and love movies so much? Yet you haven't seen them. <laughs> yeah, you know the movies you've seen. That's why you know them so well. Yeah, that's true. I'm sorry. Broken childhood. I she don't can, know. Blame it on something. <laughs> broken childhood. <laughs> you can, how about this? She can only be an expert in so much. That's true. Oh, you're using that? I like that. I like that. That's Lauren, very good. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Shout out to Lauren. What are we talking about today, Chris? Today we're talking about Muppet Christmas Carol, the best Christmas movie in existence, bar none. I will have zero dissent. If you think it's a Christmas story, let me know why you're wrong in the in the comments down below while you're doing that. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for joining us today. I would have to disagree with you. Well, I will agree it is the best adaption of the Christmas Carol that I have seen. I don't think it's the best Christmas movie. It's there. It's up there in Christmas movies I've seen. But I like the Christmas story. Well, I mean, like I said, you're, you're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> Who says I'm wrong? Me. Okay. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> hey, listen, I always say people are allowed to enjoy bad movies so long as they understand that they're bad movies. Where do I you... own a DVD copy of Green Lantern. I'm not saying it's the best movie ever, but I enjoyed it enough to buy a DVD copy. Where do you stand on Die Hard being a Christmas movie or not? I mean, there's no standing on it. The answer is yes, it is a Christmas movie. I disagree. I know you do. Hardly. Again, a lot I know. of you wrong. I know. I'm probably disappointing Gary very much so right now. <laughs> listen, it's not officially Christmas until Hans Gruber falls out of Nakatomi Plaza. It's a movies because it uh, explain to maybe explain to me why everybody thinks this is okay, a Christmas how about this? movie. Let me tell let me tell you about a different let me explain a different Christmas film to you. Okay. It's a story during set during Christmas time about a man mm -hmm. separated from his family, okay. his loved ones by work. Yeah. That sounds a little like Scrooge, doesn't it? Christmas music. Right? So yeah, you know, magic. He's yeah. uh he's going to meet up potentially with his family to to reconcile. Um, when the Disney villain, I have a question though. Yeah. Does Santa show up at some point? Ho, 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 maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then Wait what a minute, you're just he describing Die Hard. <laughs> he shows up at the, at, at this giant company Christmas party and then it's his job to save Christmas. And at the end, he brings his entire family back together as a loving family unit. Did I just describe Die Hard? Yes. It wasn't a different movie. Case in point, Christmas film. What if it was an Easter party? Would it be an Easter film then at that point? I mean, are you just basing yes, it? Yes, but I would love to see the corporation that's holding a giant Easter, Easter party. party with a big Easter bunny. <laughs> yes, that Hans Gruber also wants to <laughs> infiltrate. I just, I don't know. I don't think it's, to me, it's it's a great movie. I, I hey, I love Die Hard. I think it's great. I think it's fun to watch during Christmas. I don't think it's a Christmas movie because I don't put it in the same category as like Santa Claus I Jingle understand the, way. the exact same excitement John McClane does when he unwraps that MP5 White given to him by the terrorist. <laughs> if I unwrapped an MP5, I would also be very excited. Okay. Just, hey, I'm, I'm just dropping Christmas ideas. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. You can be wrong. It's all <laughs> right. Wink, wink, you know. Yeah. Whatever you want to get me for Christmas. I am the, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This, uh, you, you'd be lucky if you get a bag of coal this year. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah, I'd be relatively deserving. No, nah, at least the, the house. At least the house will be warm then. Yeah, it is so freaking cold here in Vegas. I, I am. We moved I'm inside a of the last year, now, so lately. this is our first winter, and it is. It's in not this, our first. It, no, but it's our first our winter third. in this. No, in this new place though. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. It, it's a little bit bigger, and it's a little bit more interesting trying to figure out how to get a little heated in, and it's been freezing. Freaking cold. But out. even in Chicago, I, I was never complaining about how cold it is. Even when it like hits negative 10 degrees, you're just built for it. You're, you're like, ah, that's all right. I'll just throw on a hoodie and uh, flip flops and shorts. I've seen those guys. Your, your blood has thinned out in the couple of years you've been here. I can't, I, like, I have to have a anymore. heated blanket. I have to have a sweatshirt. I have to have socks on. 
I have to have our dogs with us. And I took our dog. You were with me. We took our dogs to the park the other day. It was a little bit nicer out than it is today, but I mean, it was like what, like fifty-eight degrees out, and we had on like like light jackets. No, I had a hoodie and a jacket on and a hat. Did you for that as well? Yes, and wool socks. Because we saw those other people walking their dogs. They were they were full up, you know, winter jacket, scarf, hat, gloves, boots. I'm assuming thermals underneath at that point. Well, when I moved to Los uh, Los Angeles, when I was there for school and work, I remember my first winter there. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is really nice. I can get like a light jean jacket, light leather jacket, walk around. Not a big deal. And then I would see people on the bus or at school in like tr- uh, like pea coats and scarves and hats when it was like this. Uh, what do you, this this feels like a late spring, <laughs> like a like a light spring into fall type of weather going on here. Mm, yeah. Well, I mean, compared to Chicago, this is still going to be a lot nicer. I'm freezing. I'm freezing right now. That's why I have a hat on. <laughs> I would put my jacket on probably if if I didn't want a little bit of movement. <laughs> This is why we can't have nice things. Yes, this is true. This is true. Uh, All right. You even have your hands tucked in your sleeves. This is how cold, but yet here I am drinking a cold beverage. (laughs) You're going to put that jean jacket on like halfway through. I know you are. I I don't drink hot coffee. I drink only hot coffee at home or tea at home. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm sick, I'll get tea out. But when we're out and about, it could be negative 10 degrees. And I'll be like, I would like, where's the camera? I would like a... Uh, venti iced coffee, please. Extra ice. <laughs> See, but I hold the exact opposite because when it's 115 degrees outside in the desert, I will still order hot coffee in the morning. I know you will. You're and psycho. everybody looks at me like I'm insane. <laughs> Same. <laughs> All right. Muppet Christmas Carol. What's Christmas no, we're not doing. We're not talking about, we're not talking about uh, Die Hard and coffee for the rest of the... I mean, I could talk about... I could debate Die I mean, we're just going to be going I mean, in loops. We're not going to be debating anything. You're wrong. Chris, when will you learn Yippee one, Kanye. I'm a wife, I'm your wife, and two, I'm a woman? I'm never wrong. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the internet. Now. Yes, welcome to the internet. <laughs> no, but we did, uh, we're here today to talk about uh, Christmas, bit of Christmas movies, I guess. Yeah. And mostly Muppet Christmas Carol, because that's what we just watched mm-hmm. for the hundredth time. It's my it's my go-to, got to do it every year Christmas movie. You know what? I appreciate it because I... I can sit and watch Muppet Christmas Carol with you. Mm -hmm. I just cannot watch the other Christmas movie your family likes to watch. Don't say my thing. I mean, they enjoy it, but it's strangely, that's Kat's favorite Christmas movie. Well, I can't do Love Actually. It's just, it's, it's boring to me. There might be some Love Actually fans out there. Maybe, I don't even remember what the- There's a lot of Love Actually fans out there. I think you're probably- In in the minority In a relative minority. I don't think it's, I don't think it's such a huge, hotly contested movie. I can see people not liking it. I would be willing to bet you're in the minority. I feel it's boring. Like, I, after watching it the one time with your family, it's like, yeah, I don't need to watch this movie again. It's like a, it's like a Guy Ritchie love movie. It's a bunch of it's intertwi- small, small intertwining inter- stories. Inter- that I know they've together. tried to do it again with different holiday movies. Yeah, like I think they did one for Valentine's and Day and, and stuff. No, I meant like the same concept of Love Actually, trying to capture the magic of Love Actually, but do it in a different holiday movie. Mm. I know they did one for Valentine's Day. I thought they did one for another one, but I'm like, first of all, the first, in my opinion, the first one wasn't that good to begin with, to recycle it again. Come on, that was back when, that was Kira Knightley, like, in her prime. I know, the I know. height of Kira Knightley. I understand. Alan Rickman's in that too, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I you, couldn't Alan do Rickman. it. I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. Severus Snape. Yeah. Take yeah. it too soon. Watched many Christmas movies this no, season. No, we've been a little light this season. I've watched There's Jingle first, All the Way, yeah, Santa Claus. I saw the Christmas Story, which is my favorite Christmas movie. I refuse movie. to watch Christmas Story. I wish you. Would. I've seen it enough times in my life. If anybody, rem- I wonder if it's still if T and I don't know if TNT or TBS is still a network. If they are, yeah, I'm sure they are. We've had cable in years. Yeah, but I remember. I think it's TNT where they used to play it 24 hours on Christmas, Eve and day, where it would so you could. Watch a little bit of it. Go to your like aunt's house. Come back and you could catch it again, and it would just be playing twenty four hours. I loved that movie. Starting from Thanksgiving, I had family members so in love with that movie. I can only liken it to being waterboarded with a Christmas story. Waterboarded with the Christmas. Story. <laughs> Never again. Well, didn't one of your cousins have the lamp? Yeah, back back when Amazon was not a thing and getting the leg lamp was actually relatively not easy to do. My cousin. Had one. She was always in the local paper for it every year. 
Um, and it was always causing the accidents, causing car accidents because it was on a major street and people would stop <laughs> to take photos because who would even have such a thing back then? But uh, yeah, it's yeah. a little weird now looking at it as an adult again, still my favorite Christmas movie, but as an adult watching it as an adult, I'm like, ah, I, I feel think like they should go back to Hammond and film it again now sh- in the modern day. They did, they did recently. There's a third one where no, he no, came I mean, back. I mean, real Hammond. Oh, no, uh, they. <laughs> To have a leg lamp, no. I feel like <laughs> if 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 that story took place now, that leg lamp would be in Dad's special room, not yeah. just displayed <laughs> in the front window Dad's of the cre- house. Dad's creepy room, probably. Yeah, yes, his special room. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he does in there, but he keeps VHS in the ceiling tiles. Ugh. <laughs> All right. What? Okay, this is supposed to be about Christmas. Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about the Muppet Christmas Carol because that is your favorite Again, Christmas movie. the best Christmas movie. I give it five stars off the bat. It's already the first thing in my notes. Five stars mm. right across the top. You have some fa- fun facts? No, we have plenty of fun facts. We get to those. At Do you want to tell wanna, people what it's about? I want to talk about it's it's a Christmas Carol. The you know the story the tale well, of that Ebenezer. Was <laughs> the tale of classic Dickens tale of Ebenezer Scrooge. Who was a wealthy miser who does not see the value in Christmas, let alone his fellow man. And through a series of miraculous events, the spirit of Christmas intervenes in his life and shows him the errors of his ways and the adventures we therefore go on. Mm. Now do it with him up a twist and it gets even better. Mm. So uh, <clears throat> opening up, uh, the other question, I know I'm, you know, we could talk about... Uh, one of my favorite memes I've ever seen is it was very recent. I was talking about Michael Caine and Tim Curry. And it really to me nails what made Michael Caine so great in this role is that they're the same. And he's playing Scrooge. Yeah, he's playing Just for Scrooge. people yeah. who have Let never me, seen this whoop. movie. <laughs> as I as I bury the lead off the bat, yes, he's playing Ebenezer Scrooge. In fact, he uh, very much so wanted to play Scrooge. He really, as I found out doing a little bit of research, really hounded him for that role when they found out that that's that they were doing the Muppet Christmas Carol, which I think is pretty great. But um, there's this meme saying, what a Michael, Michael Caine does an excellent job because he treats the Muppets like they're actors. And Tim Curry does a great job in Treasure Island because he acts like a Muppet. Interesting. So same side, of different you're different sides of the same point as we're. So I think that's a pretty interesting start because he really does through the whole movie. He, he, he There's no wink, no nod. It's it's straight lace the whole time. He is he is at Benicer Like he's Scrooge. talking to other dramatic actors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's, he's doing a play the entire time. Interesting. Yeah, he, ne- he never breaks. It is not Muppet Ebenezer Scrooge. It is Ebenezer Scrooge, and he never breaks character. Hmm. So fantastic. Fantastically cast for that. This movie is just full of uh, great, great music. And, of course, it's, you know, Jim Henson's uh, Muppets, so great puppetry. And it's the first movie after Jim Henson passed away, right? It's done by his yeah. son, I believe, Brian, Brian Henson. Henson. Yeah. Yep. In fact, um, I had never, this has been one of my favorite Christmas movies for like ever, but I've never really bothered to do any research in it. In fact, when we started the movie today, I had mentioned to you that uh, I think it's strange because Rolf is such a beloved character, the piano playing dog. You know, it doesn't have, he has a brief cameo in the film and doesn't have any speaking parts. And I thought, how odd this whole time. And I only find out today that it's because it was Jim Henson's favorite. It was like the one he felt the closest to. Mm-hmm. And they didn't have the heart to get a replacement for him yet at that point. So they didn't have anybody to voice any Rolf parts. So Rolf was just kind of in there as a tribute to Oh, yeah. that's so sweet. Wow. I, I love, you know, I grew up with the Muppets. I love the Muppets. Mm-hmm. Actually, when I was younger, I wanted to be a Muppeteer. I, I looked into it. I wanted to create my own Muppets. I, I used to uh, glue things together and stuff, sock puppets and things. I always wanted to be a puppeteer back when it was like the height of it. Like mm. that was, the, you know, Labyrinth is one of my favorite movies, The Dark Crystal. Granted, I like a little bit more of the darker stuff from <laughs> Henson. Sure. That's probably why I don't see a lot of Christmas movies. <laughs> well, in fairness, for being a Muppet film, this is a fairly dark film. There's some like Well, the Christmas creepy- Carol story is pretty dark. Dark, dark to begin with. Right, but they, so for instance, for those of you who know or don't know the story, as he goes through the evening, Scrooge is first visited by his old, uh, well, in Muppet Christmas Carol, his old partners, the Marley brothers, normally just, you know, Mar- the, you know was it uh, Bob Marley or not Bob Marley? Bob yeah. Marley. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them is Robert Marley. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so. I don't think it's. No, but they, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> we had a totally different type of Christmas so party actually, going on. The reason that popped in my head, it's another one of the so the when you have the wailing uh, cash boxes behind him during the Marley Brothers song, yeah. that was supposed to be a a nod of the hat to Bob Marley and the Whalers. Interesting. That that was, well, that was one of the trivia I read. I got it on the internet, so it must be true. I uh, I feel like we're jumping ahead though, because we're missing one of my favorite parts in the movie. Wait, hit hit me. Uh, it's when they're at his office and they're talking about putting more mm. coal for the heat. They're like, "We're all cold. It's freezing." And he's like, "You know, it's I don't know. It's colder on the bread line or something yeah. to that extent." And all yeah, the perhaps you'll find it warmer in the unemployment line. And all the rats turn into a, yep, little Hawaiian like island, island in the, the sun. sun. Fine, fine. <laughs> I think I like I probably like the rats the most in this movie. Well, Rizzo is. Rizzo One of the most great. excellent components of yeah. this film. I didn't, you told me today, which was fascinating to me, that Gonzo is married to a chicken. Isn't he, though? I, I didn't, I never actually backed that up. I said, I'm pretty sure he's married to a chicken. That he likes chicken ladies. Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's in, got an obsession for chicken ladies. Yeah, why not? And he's an alien. There's a there's an easy, easy joke about that. I mean, look at the thighs on that chicken. Jesus. See, there you go. It was right there. But yes, that's my favorite part. <laughs> the heat wave. The heat wave? Because mm-hmm. right now I could use a heat wave. <laughs> you know, I think it's plenty fine in here. But uh, it's just your, uh, your just your blood thinning out. Yeah, you, I know. We're you back in the Midwest for a little bit. I know. Uh, all right, back to, but back to the, so Marley the Marley Brothers. Marley Brothers, they do, they do their bit. They have their song. They warn them of the three upcoming ghosts. Should we also establish, I feel we're all over the place. Shouldn't we also establish that Gonzo is Mr. Dickinson? The Charles Dickens, you mean? Yeah, D- Dickens. Mr. Dickinson. <laughs> Charles Dickens. <laughs> Mr. Dickinson forever now. Mr. Dickinson. <laughs> Shouldn't we establish the characters first before we get into one of the big, the starting point of the storyline? You know what? I you are quite right. I'm, I just where's I can't Rizzo? Imag- Rizzo? I can't imagine a world <laughs> in which you people have not seen this movie because it's so good. That's where I'm struggling. We're quite right. So you do have Gonzo the Great. Playing Charles Dickens, or Mr. who Dickinson. says is Mr. Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> you have Rizzo the Rat as himself. Is Rizzo? Is Rizzo yeah, playing Rizzo? Rizzo plays Rizzo. Okay. You have Miss Piggy playing Miss Cratchit. You have Kermit playing Bob, Bob Cratchit. Cratchit. And then um, uh, Fozzie Wig. Fozzie Wig, yes. That's another great one in there. The Eagle, Sam the Eagle. Sam the Eagle's playing, still Sam the Eagle, but yes. it is the British way. Yes. It is the American <laughs> way. We're going to head again. the British way. Do it again. See, it's so much fun. It's just so easy to like. And then a, a bunch yeah, of o- extra ones are just like little Scattered side throughout. characters playing. Yeah, if yeah. you actually look in the background, you can find some of the Fraggle Rock characters. <gasps> mm-hmm. Did I miss that? Mm-hmm. In fact, the um, I can't think of the dog's name, but the dog from the garage, <gasps> from the workshop. Yeah. Yeah, he's, one, he's, very, he's like the most obvious one in there. I loved Fraggle Rock growing up. That was one of my favorite shows watching as a kid. Fraggle Rock was excellent. It does not hold up. I don't think it does. Well, I think they brought it back and then that didn't hold up. But the older stuff I haven't seen in a while. But I used to love that as a kid. That was my jam. I mean, Fraggle Rock was, uh, you get, would you get the dozers who ate the the structure? Yeah. That was, that was somebody's fever dream. When you really think about it. All these Muppets are somebody's fever dream. Don't kid yourself. There are some weird Muppets out there. I'm sure we could go down the down a conspiracy theory iceberg of weird looking Muppets from Henson and you're like, this is somebody's favorite dream. Go ahead. Fair enough. So, all right. So in the beginning of this movie, they're established that <laughs> Scrooge <laughs> is pretty much a Scrooge, right? He yeah. doesn't believe in taking off Christmas. He doesn't believe in giving to the poor. Nope. He actually don't make merry yourself at Christmas. He's it's... planning to evict a bunch of people on Christmas Day that, you know. Uh, one guy comes to the office and is like, you know, you can't, you can't squeeze this. Yeah, I'm the stone. You can't, can't squeeze, squeeze more blood from, from or something. And he just throws, him, he throws out. him out the window. Thank yeah. you for not yelling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his unc- his nephew comes in, tries to bring him some Christmas spirit. Mm-hmm. And he basically tells him, bah, humbug, you know, don't you sell it. Basically, you celebrate Christmas poor your way. I'll your celebrate way. Mine. And I'll celebrate it mine. Is that pretty much? I, think, it I up? think it's pretty much. Then you get, uh, of course, you get uh, does the Doctor Honeydew and Beaker show up for the asking for the homeless for the donations for the homeless, which is you know a cute little interaction. Of course, Scrooge doesn't want to make any donations and throws them out too as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Kermit. Well, well, hold on. Go ahead. 
don't forget there's the other there's the other one like little guest right in there which is the the bunny all the right bunny who does the christmas this is one of my favorite parts of the whole movie i'm the crisp and eve and the door opens and right Show. No, she just gets scared of Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> and he just whips the Christmas wreath at him. And you go back, I mean, he hurls it at that Muppet. That poor Muppet. <laughs> if I was that Muppet at the, because at the end, that's the same one yeah, that he sends the Christmas goose. Sends him money. I'd be like, screw you, Scrooge. And yeah, just take, take the, money. the whole thing and go. go. <laughs> that's what I was expe- really, it's what I would have expected, but the Christmas spirit. Dang yeah, it. I know. I know. Well, we also have Kermit playing Bob Cratchit, as we Bob said. Cratchit, who asks for Christmas Day off. For him and the rest Rat, of the, the rats, yes. the rat folk working there, mm-hmm. and he and, for, and I think this is the starting break point of Scrooge without his subconscious, without actually realizing it, because he gives him the day off. He gives sure him he the, didn't he didn't want to, but he does. He does begrudgingly, but I think subconsciously this is his little like starting breaking point. Maybe I don't know. No, I could see that, but I think I think. Um, Oh, I'm, I'm getting ready to jump ahead again. Also want to say something, too, before we get into the spirits coming to visit him and mm-hmm. all the all the music and stuff. He looks ratchet. <laughs> he's looking old. He's got gray hair. He, he's got, like, no color to his skin. The reason why I want to bring this up is that if you actually watch him go through each ghost and stuff, he actually looks more youthful each time. There's more color to his skin, his hair. Um, there's the bags under his eyes he aren't becomes as more, predominant. More human as he gets more in touch with his humanity. Maybe, maybe that's it. But uh, okay, go ahead. But yeah, so he, you know, he begrudgingly gives them the time off. Mm-hmm. They close up shop. Uh, they have a great little song while they're closing up the shop as the rats are being catapulted to close the blinds on the windows. And the problem is, is also they have to be there early on, the day after. Yeah, Christmas. the following day. Yeah, be there mm-hmm. all the earlier. Mm-hmm. But a uh, great little song where they're closing up shop. And then when they leave, you find the uh, the penguins are having their annual skating Christmas party. And, you know, of course, Bob Cratchit does a, does a little does a little ice skating with them. And you get Charles, you get Mr. Dickinson. Mr. Dickinson. <laughs> Mr. Dickinson. <laughs> Mr. Dickinson and Rizzo, who also participate in the Christmas party. I like them a lot because th- the way they move through the story is great. Because they are, they're acting as a reliable narrator, but they're only pseudo visible. They're consistently in the background, but people never really notice them. They have to sneak into like the houses for the different, so they can actually see the different parts of what's going on. I just think the way they kind of put them in as a narrator, as our point of view, is really great. Um, I just just think it adds a lot of fun because they're just a great, uh, I mean, come on, it's Gonzo and Rizzo. What a great comedic duo. Well, we also pointed out because we were listening to the soundtrack on the way here mm-hmm. that uh, they cut out a lot of the music for the actual the- theatrical they, they release. They cut out several songs for sure. And you made a point which I agree with you that uh, it is, it would have been more Muppet type movie yes, in the, a sense more, I would say. If you go back and listen to the soundtrack, yeah. the songs that got cut from it sound much more like your standard Muppet songs than what we got in the film. And it's not that they're Bad. It's just that man. It would have made it an entirely different film. Yes, it would have softened it a lot. And I really think it's the the strange kind of sharp edge they they keep in this because there's some there's some creepy parts in it for for little kids. I mean, the ghost of yeah, Christmas little- past scared put grapes in my pants. When you I was mean a the kid. F- or, future? Or future? Yeah, that's yes. the one. Well, ghost of Christmas past scared you. You think she is very creepy? I don't looking. think she's scared me, but she's very uncanny valley looking. It's weird. But, so we're getting ahead of ourselves again. again. Go ahead. We're perfect at this. We're both the we're so good Christmas at this. Yet to come. Yes. Professionals, consummate yes. professionals. <laughs> so they have their, you know, they do that great. So they finish up their great song and Scrooge is making his way back to his house. He has, I, I love the, the transition, the scene where Scrooge goes to open up his door when he gets home and the door knocker turns into the Muppet Marley brother and scares him onto the ground. And of course, yeah, you know, it was it was nothing. A trick of the imagination as he goes inside to bed down for the evening. Of course, we end up eventually having the Marley brothers have their great song, which was cut a verse short. I think they should have kept the verse. That's just me. I kind of want to say that Scrooge right now, current Scrooge right now mm-hmm. in this in at this point in the story, is all these dinks is future. <laughs> 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 oh, everybody who calls themselves a dink, if mm-hmm. this is your future. <laughs> 
Sorry. No, <laughs> Go no, ahead. You're, you're you're not wrong. I mean, yeah. Scrooge is valuing dollar over uh, over family, family, and, and having people, sure. loved ones hey, at listen, the end. You guys and stuff. do you, but uh, you know, yes, Christmas okay, comes for us all. Go ahead. But uh, yeah, so we get the the Marley Bros song is actually I think one of my favorite songs in the entire thing. It's very creepy. As a kid, it was the most creepiest thing to me. It's all the chains and the yeah. way they wrap them up and um and yeah, I a hundred percent agree with you. But also, I feel. If you, like when we we're especially when we we're listening to it in the car on the way here, the instrumentals for it are well instrumental and in, in really giving you that that dark, ooh that dark doomed vibe for mm-hmm. for Scrooge. Um, and of course, they give him the classic warning to expect three spirits to visit him throughout the night, and expect the first ghost when the bell tolls one. Can we also point out the fact that it's interesting because it, it's a camera trick with making them almost see through, but they're mm-hmm. still Muppets. So there's still wire work happening here too, as well, and it doesn't. It still holds up, I think, even now. Right. It and doesn't take Bros, you out of. We should out also of say it. are it's two, and they're being played by the uh, the two old critics whose names are escaping me. I know I have them in my further along in my notes. When I get there, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll correct myself, but I don't want to lose my spot. But uh, yeah, and then we get that uh, to your uncanny valley ghost, oh, the ghost of Christmas past, which Looks was like a cabbage patch. Well, kid. that was one of the. It was interesting what they actually did. One of the trivia pieces. Perfect time to insert it. They, she was a specialized Muppet. They actually put her in water. She was submerged. That's how they got that weird oh, movement. And then they green screened her in. That's cool. Yeah. That's why she's so that, creepy yeah, looking. That's why you get that really like well, ghostly movement out of her. Mm-hmm. So we're heading to the past. This is Christmas. Uh, this is the ghost of Christmas past. Yes, absolutely. So we get to get a little bit of background on Scrooge. And well, we just get. I love the, you know, expect. When you get Gonzo outside narrate, excuse me, Mr. Dickens. Mr. Mr. Dickinson. Dickinson. <laughs> when you have Charles Dickens outside in the branch narrating with Rizzo, and you get the you hear the clock strike one. Spec the first ghost when the bell tolls one. It was just a, foof, it was yeah. a big blinding light. I that was just such a I love that shot. And uh Scrooge very carefully opens up the the curtains to find what you can say again, you consider to be the world's creepiest puppet. And uh, by the way, I want curtains like that around our bed. Maybe that'll help me stay warm in the winter. <laughs> you're, you're the one that always wants a cold house, though. I know. I'm weird. We can't take you anywhere. I know. Yes. Yeah, so this guy, so girl, guy, we don't, I don't want to, ass- the go- the go- I don't want to assume the ghost is just- the them of Christmas past. <laughs> yes. The them of Christmas past. Uh, the ghost of Christmas past shows up and takes him to guess what? The, the past. past. <laughs> You know, and while they're while they're there, of course, you get to see you know the the transition of him growing up as a young lad with no family, spending all of his time at school when everybody else goes home. And it is the American it, way. Yeah, this you end up. Uh, there's a cool little there's a cool little bit in there. I, I think not everybody necessarily picks up on right away, which is when they when they go to the past and they end up at his school, like the very first shot inside of the school. There's a bunch of Muppet Bus. busts, and it's all you know. It's like. It's what it's like with like Aristotle and Shakespeare. And you have like all these great Muppet, you know, and then it ends, of course, with they have Gonzo there, but it's not Gonzo. It's technically Charles Dickens, which to me is perfect because it completes the line of like, you know, these great, you know, these great writers, thinkers, great and writers and thinkers. And, yeah. Yeah. So I, I thought that was a, a, a fun little touch uh, in there. But as you watch him growing up and going to school with uh, Sam the Eagle, who does delivers his only line that he needed, it is the American way. Uh, oh, or in English. Oh, no. it is the British way, as he's explaining the height of business to a young Ebenezer Scrooge and congratulating him on his graduation. And he's going to be uh, essentially interning at a fine establishment at Fozzie Wig's Rubber Chicken Factory, <laughs> <laughs> which I love too. He doesn't. Well, <laughs> if you actually look when they're at Fozzie Wig's. They, they've clearly branched out because they have like rubber clown shoes and stuff as well hanging from the rafters and stuff in the background. Mm-hmm. So it's good to see that uh, business is apparently booming. Rubber chickens don't go out of, you know. Never out of style. Through any type of economy. Any type. You're always going to need to sell rubber chickens. People demand rubber chickens. doesn't matter. It's a necessity in life. Go ahead. That's well, my bit. That, that's your bit? <laughs> Well, you have this, so it's a, it's a great scene where the, you know, you end up transitioning, the ghost takes him from graduation day to Fozzie Wiggs for, oh, this is Fozzie Wiggs' famous Christmas party. 
and getting to getting to see everybody show up for the party and all the cool Muppets in the background. And Scrooge being Scrooge like, we're spending way too yeah, much money on this, bro. <laughs> this is these yeah. people are not worth this. <laughs> yeah, the young, the young Scrooge, the young Scrooge shows up and during during the Christmas party, I tell Fozzie would get yeah, exactly that. How much can you believe how much money we're spending on this Christmas party? I believe I turned to you and said, This is the same kid in school that reminded the teacher that we didn't turn in our homework yet. Yeah. Hey, didn't you say we're taking a test today? Shut up, Ebenezer. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I I'm with Fozzie Bear on this when it comes times for Christmas. Christmas to me is not so much on giving gifts. While I am definitely somebody who loves to give gifts. It's to me, it's more the bringing joy to others, whether that is gifts, feeding them, providing in some way for them. Because I feel that like, in a sense, that is the true meaning of Christmas. It's not like, oh, what, what, I don't know, what new phone am I going to get this season? It's more so of like appreciating the people you've, you love throughout the year. I wanted a G-Wagon. Yeah, exactly. It's appreciating the people in, in any type of way you can, because some people can't afford to celebrate Christmas. Some people can afford to be luxurious at Christmas, mm-hmm. but I think it's so much more the purpose and meaning behind your intent of it. Well, it's actually one of the great lines that I think uh, we kind of blew past it earlier when we were talking about when Fred showed up in uh, in Scrooge's office earlier. One of the lines that they share is, um, I think, uh, was it Scrooge has something on the lines of, what right have you to celebrate Christmas? You're poor enough. And he says, what right of you to be, you know, since what right of you to be by humbug about it? Like you're rich enough. Yeah. Yeah. I think people sometimes lose the meaning of, you know, be, being appreciative of the, the loved ones you have around and being appreciative of less fortunate people too, like helping if you can. Uh, I think people have lost that. I think it's too much become too commercialized in it. I'm, you know, you know what the problem was? It's only turned Santa red because, you know, Santa wasn't always red. Well, well, that's Coca-Cola. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Commercialism. Yes, yes. Anyway, get back into. So this is where he he meets his his one and only true love, I guess, right? Uh correct. At this party. Correct, Belle. Belle, whose song got removed from the theatric. Yes, there's a. It's it's in like the original VHS, and I think it was in like the TV versions of it. You could see it. I couldn't find my DVD version of it, which I know has it. So we had to stream it on, on Disney, Disney Plus. Plus. Uh, but he meets <laughs> Belle and but, the, it uh, doesn't have the song in there though. I know he meets Belle and he's court. He courts her mm-hmm. and they, she, the, she wants to get married, but he, in a sense, it's money first. He wants, yeah, he, he wants, wants to, to make be, sure that they're going to be well off, off, but he, his impossible standards, he's never going to get to that point. It's always going to be one more year, one more day, one more this, one more that. Without realizing like, Hey, chop, chop, we're not getting any younger, you know? If you truly love someone, you can love someone being poor or being rich. And that's why there's the line uh, when you say your vows, right? In, in, in sickness, sickness and health, health rich, rich or poor, rich or poor, mm-hmm. death do us part. Except for you, because if I die first, I'm coming back to haunt you. Oh, I thought I thought I was supposed to. I thought I was supposed to do like a ritual, sacrificial, you know, seppuku. No, 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 you. no, 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 no. Okay. No, I'll just come back and haunt you. No, don't. Do you. That. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Uh, and uh, she basically breaks up with him, right? In the song, but it it's not released in the song. theater. Yeah, they cut it out because they're like, this song is very, it's very, very sad. sad. <laughs> and, and that's it, it. He doesn't marry. He doesn't, he never finds someone else. He doesn't, like, he just is an old grumpy man. I mean, I hate to say it, he turns into a real Scrooge. <laughs> ah, ah, I saw what you did there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, they, they go through the breakup and then from there, the, it's, it's right from there. Then the ghost drop is pretty much drops him off, right? It's the, yeah, it's basically showing him, you know, in the past, I wouldn't say it's his mistakes, but showing where he came from, why he is that yeah, way he it, is. Yes, exactly. This is how you would got Scrooge be at. differently if he had a loving family. You know, it's not so much celebrating at the time of Christmas, but all year round, would he mm-hmm. be differently if he had parents to go home to? siblings and things like that he had no one and Fozzie Bear is the only one I see as more of a father figure to him Fozzie Wig Fozzie Wig sorry Fozzie Wig was more of a father figure to him in this short amount of time I could see it's interesting I never considered it that way but I could def- I, I could definitely see that angle of it for sure mm-hmm. trying to be a a softening paternal so that's element. where well, let me be a conspiracy theorist for a second 
that's where Tim I Florence. think uh, the him giving them off Christmas Day comes from subconsciously because mm. of his time with Fozzie Wig. He got Fozzie. He got Fozzie wugged. Maybe think. Yeah. So that's my that's my conspiracy. <laughs> that's the past tense of Fozzie Wig, right? Yes. Fozzie wugged. Now we're going in. So she basically so, is like, see, yeah, she, sad pass. See you yeah, later. That sucks. Psych. Deuces. <laughs> but that's okay because we get to your you know, favorite we were talking puppet. About this. Yeah, this actually. We, I was thinking. I initially said this is my favorite Muppet in the movie, but the reality of the situation is I think the ghost of Christmas Present may just be the best Muppet. He looks a little Santa Clausy. He does look a little Santa Clausy. Um, he actually funny story. Uh, in Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, I don't, hold on. No, I promise I'm, I'm going to pull this together. So like 5e furballs, like these blue guys with long ears. Original furballs actually looked a lot more like the Ghost of Christmas Present. They're like oh. large, they're like half giant Celts. Interesting. Yes. So there's your there's your random D&D fact for the day. If you haven't seen the D&D movie, there's a reference for that for this show and Dresden Files. I think I've got them all out of the way. Okay, good. Perfect. Uh- <laughs> so we get to the Ghost of Christmas Present. Come on in and know me better, man. I love this ghost. He is just the friendliest. You just want to give him a loved. hug. You do. You just want to go up you to do, him and do, just cozy do. up. I bet he's pretty warm. <laughs> I literally have it written down here. Winter Present is the best Muppet in the movie. Uh, you know, he's got the uh, the great song, you know, um, you know, the, it feels like Christmas. That, that whole thing is just, it's so good. That great. It's great going through the whole little set. I love the the detail. Well, I love the movement in his, all of his hair, mm-hmm. his beard, his everything. It, the details back then into the these Muppets were so good, so well. And even we were talking about Gonzo's costume change each time mm-hmm. too. He's got like four or five through, costume yeah. changes as like well. A chimney sweep, a lamp lighter, two different, two or three different suits. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah. So good to it's, it's, uh, spend on to the detail and the costume design for it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I like this guy. He reminds me of the Giants for Fraggle, again, Fraggle Rock. And this is not, this is somebody in a suit too, uh, working this entire huge Muppet. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think I came up with a really uh, funny, interesting way. I think it is a, ha- a pseudo decent way to describe him. He's like the world's friendliest drill sergeant. Right. Because he yes. spent all of Christmas present does. He goes like, it's all building Ebenezer up and then breaking him down to get him more in touch again with his humanity. And then he just does it again, does it again. So first thing he does is with his nephew, bringing him yes. to see how they're celebrating Christmas at his nephew's. And they can't see him there because, you know, he's just he's taking a, ghost. a look at, yeah, he's yeah, a ghost, yeah. taking a look at what's going on. He finds himself trying to participate in the games and the joy of the occasion, even though they can't hear him. And he's starting to look more youthful mm-hmm. right now, too, as well. Oh, Hair color is coming back. Smile. Smile, yes. Some color to his cheeks and stuff. Mm-hmm. But he finds out that they all think he's pretty much yeah, the devil. Play, yeah, they're playing, you know, they're playing a guessing game. And, you know, it's what, you know, animal, it was it animal, mineral, or vegetable? And it was an animal and... You know, it's usually found in a city and nobody wants it around. And it's not a cockroach, a spider, or, or a, a leech. rat, or yeah, a leech or a rat. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know what it is. It's, it's Ebenezer Scrooge. And so here he is having this great time. Like, oh, this is the, he's like, oh, this is the experience I could be having with my family. And then they, they make light of him because he's just kind of been a jerk forever. Yeah. And, you know, and, and just to see his, just to see, he's not upset or disappointed, but he, he takes it. He takes it personally, but he he owns it. He's like, yeah, I did that to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's growing as a that, person. Yeah, that's the build up to the breakdown, and then he says, you know, so bre- he they build him up, break him down, okay. and we're gonna do it again and by taking him to the Cratchit well, house. Yeah, the Cratchit yeah. house, where we meet Miss Piggy as uh, Mrs. Cratchit, mm-hmm. <laughs> and Kermit and Piggy have been busy. Scott, yeah, Bettina, Belinda. Uh, Tiny t- Tim, Tim and, and B- Pete or Thomas, one of the two. I can't remember. <sighs> no, I can't. I didn't write it down either. I can't. Is it Peter? Maybe it's Peter. It is Peter. Okay, but it's got two pig kids and two, in the two frog below. kids, which interesting. <laughs> 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 I don't want to think too much into it, hey, but it's that's okay. you're right. That's that's uh that's an interesting combination. But I, and that's another great song though too. It's because you have. Miss Piggy and the twins and Peter at home getting the dinner ready. And you've got Bob Cratchit and Tiny Tim coming back. And you've got just this great little Kermit, like acapella as he's singing with his kid. Bong, bong, beat a beat a bong, bong, bong. 
Tis the season to which I'll... Didn't Can't you join say me. I yeah, was this. Mrs... Uh, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, but you're Miss Piggy. We'll get to it. You're Miss Piggy more in the ghost of Chris... Uh, or towards the, at the end of the film when she says, uh, I'll raise you off the pavement. <laughs> yeah, I am here to give you a raise and I will raise you off the pavement. What? <laughs> That's true. Anybody who comes after you, I'm usually like, <laughs> get over it. Chris, you'll be like, hey, it's okay. It's all right. Whatever. I Walk away. With the frog and I piggy. push you aside. And I'm like, I am going to pulverize you <laughs> for hurting my husband. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they have this great, you know, tiny, for those who have not seen the film, you know, spoilers everywhere. If we clearly haven't gotten that Going yes. away with that yet. Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim, just Who's the sick. sick and saddest little character. And, you know, they talk about how, was it Tiny Tim says he hopes people saw him at church so they could think of how, you know, you know. The, Helping the less fortunate. Yeah. Keep that in mind kind of deal. Like, exactly. he doesn't want people to feel sorry for him. He wants it to be recognized like, hey, don't don't forget about the homeless, the less fortunate, those who, you know. God bless us, are, everyone. Yeah, everyone and stuff. I, Tim, Tim, uh, Tiny Tim represents, I think, like what humanity t- wishes they could be, where they should be, where they should be. It is yes. idealized. It's an idealized of like helping your fellow man mm-hmm. at uh, when you can. Yes, for sure. And of course, he he's coughing, and you know, uh, Tiny Tim leads him in prayer, and he's got this very helpful outlook, and you know, he's 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 grateful for everything he has, mm-hmm. not upset about the things he doesn't and which is you, how though, everybody should live even be though grateful he's been for dealt, what you have yeah, he's been dealt this really you know it's terrible hand and then you know you've got scrooge who watches his family you know doing having this meager but joyous and wonderful meal because they're just happy to be together on the day and well i think this is scrooge's first introduction to Cratchit's family mm-hmm. as well like he mm-hmm. he i think he knows of the family but has never seen the family yeah, in action yeah just yeah a family exists mm-hmm. but you know you got scrooge who who sees the family sees the the love the love in their eyes for each other and you know talks to the ghost of christmas present you know and what if you know what's what'll happen with tiny tim you know well i'm the ghost of christmas present but as far as i can see you know if things continue down the path they're going I see an empty chair by the fireplace and a crutch without an owner. Which by the time uh, that goes to Christmas. Nah, present, you get any, we'll get there. We're almost there. You're so close. You're jumping ahead. We're, we're, come on. We've got to, we don't break the streak. Okay. I'm not breaking the streak. <laughs> uh, but then this is also one of the great parts of it too. Because as, as he's going through the evening with the ghost of Christmas present. You can see the ghost of pres- Christmas present aging. That's what I was just going to say. Oh, I thought you were going to say no, something else. I was just going to say he's turned to gray and turned white. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to jump. I thought you were jumping head to the next No, no, one. no, no. <laughs> my, my, on live, well, live on air. I apologize. I'm going to clip that. I'm going to keep it. Pin it on Twitter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Elon. Pin it on X. Yes. But, uh, but yeah, so I just love that you see him aging. In fact, there's even a, a spot in there. Because he he's he's got like the full red hair, you know, this bright ginger muppet, and now it's starting to have and then, white and but gray it's great because it. there's just a there's a transition where he's it's just just a little bit more white in it. He, they use the puppet for like thirty seconds, and then he's into like full white. I'm like, what what kind? Like they probably put a ton of work into that for like this one. They scene. probably it, interchangeable wig. If yeah, so that's that's how I would do it. I don't know how they did it back then, but what I would do is Velcro on. The, the hair, mm. like create the hair, Velcro it on, and then have the difference so you don't have to create like the full puppet. System, so it, and you just pull yeah, it off sense. and then that put it back sense. on, pull off. Yeah, that's what I would do. I just want to give them way more credit. Nope, they made a bunch of different puppets and a bunch of different masks. They probably suits. did. I mean, there's there's situations where you need to do that as well, mm. depending on how how the puppet is I don't want to say damage, but how it, whatever scene's going on. I'm sure mm-hmm. there's, I'm sure they have multiple Gonzos. I'm sure they had most, uh, multiple Rizzos, things like that. Well, and I think one of the things that was great about this too, that I, I, I never understood the line. I never, I never bothered to stop and think about it until today. It struck me that at the very beginning, when he shows up, he says, you know, a, you know, spirit, are there a lot of you? This is why I have, over 1,800 brothers and sisters. And I'm like, I don't even, I never thought of what that means. And then, of course, today it finally clicked for me. It's Victorian England. He's in the 1800s. It's, he has all these brothers and sisters. It was all the Christmases that came before him. Yes. 
And I was like, oh, that 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 seems like it should have been obvious. I should have picked that up a while ago. But that's a great little it's a great little nod to note for those of you like me who never picked that up. There you go. So at this point, Ebenezer is kind of turned to yeah, he's 180 almost. And he's such a he's so fond of Christmas presents. Yes. By the time this is, you know, they they leave Cratchit's house and he's like we're talking about he's aging through and kind of step into darkness and I don't want to say into too much light, but they wind up at a graveyard. Yeah, and he right sits down. the graveyard and he and sits down. Fake little sp- sparkles yeah, show said, up on you him. Yeah, you know, spirit, you know, how much time do you have left on this earth? And I I fear I'll disappear by the time the clock strikes, or the bell strikes its 12th toll. And uh, it's really interesting because at this point he is so, Ebenezer Scrooge is so ready to to be that, to be that guy. But you've, you've got your good cop and now you've got to bring in the bad cop. Mm-hmm. And that is when you get what has to be the creepiest Muppet in existence. I wouldn't say I've seen some creepy Muppets during the Dark Crystal, but it's it's up there. But it's the, up there. The ghost of it's a very Christmas good, yet to come. Man, yes, because it's the as no a face. child. Yeah, that just it's just they did such a great job with the void, and then but it's tall, but the arms are like way way down, mm-hmm. and the, the big alien like fingers just kind of oh yeah. And they walk, a, yeah, and then he takes them to the future. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where? Where first you see that group of, of business pigs. Talking about the fact that <laughs> Some, we, they don't died. mention yeah, who so it is, who but it it, is, yeah. it's alluded to that, in fact, that Scrooge it's has passed Scrooge. away. Yeah. Nobody really cares. They just want to care what he did with his money. We also have a scene where a bunch of people had stolen things from his house to sell well, it. Before we get there, actually, this is one of the things I like. So when I say that the the I made a note of it in here, that the ghost of Christmas yet to come is creepy and that they're in the graveyard and this is like for kids, like this would be a scary scene. Gonzo, excuse me, Charles Dickens, excuse me, Mr. Mr. Dickinson, Dickinson and Rizzo was like, nope, bail. see they you said, later. We'll see, we'll see you guys at the, the finale. finale. We're not yet, this is too creepy for us. <laughs> yeah, this is, We're out. Yeah. <laughs> kids be watching this, we'll see you guys later. So, you know, and then I love that uh, Ebenezer Scrooge has got the light of Christmas in his eyes and he tells the the Christmas yet to come. He said, you know, essentially, I, I'm I'm ready to take on the lessons that you have to teach me with an open, with an open, ready, and accepting heart. And it, you know, it's this silent, imposing figure. My mental thought was, yeah, that's not what we do here. Yeah. <laughs> this ghost is like, oh, too late, dude. Yeah, Sorry. Absolutely not. So, you know, they're talking about somebody with a lot, you got the business pigs talking about the money mm-hmm. we were just talking about. Then you get to the thieves that broken into this. While he was, Whoever this was, this unfortunate soul's house, and they stole the different things. The, one of the lines that always stuck with me was there was the the one lady who stole his blanket. Well, it's still, it yeah, still it's, has it's this. It's still warm. Whatever warmth he actually yeah, ever had. Yeah, the only warmth he something. ever gave. Yeah. Yep. And I'm like, ooh. ooh that's, that's creepy. That's, it's like, that's, oh. a, that's, a, that's a. Somebody create something that keeps us alive forever because I don't plan on going anytime <laughs> soon. Because I am not. Nope. Well, nope. So, so he so he watches these you know these former business associates who you know been speaking ill of him and you know will only go to wherever this is his funeral if lunch is provided ah ha ha you've got these people who are stealing from him. so he looking hoping for what he's gotten from other spirits he looks to the ghost of Christmas yet to come and says you know give me what how do you say it he give me some tenderness and he takes him to the Cratchits and you're expecting hoping for the same love he had for Tiny Tim and. Tiny Tim's gone. Tiny Tim. But, you know, it would have had him scratch it some good to see the spot they picked up on the hill. With all the you greenery. Can see, you can see the ducks down on the river. Yeah. Crutch without an owner. It's a sad it's a sad Christmas at the Cratchit household. Tiny Tim's been gone. And then and, the final blow is taking him to his own grave. Yeah. And, and having from him there, remove after, the snow. After breaking down, no, not Tiny Tim. Please tell me Tiny Tim isn't gone. And, yeah, the ghost of Christmas... He has to come takes him to a grave and he knows, Ebenezer knows the whole time it's that his it's his own. gravestone. He keeps, you know, he's going towards it and then he turns around to the to the ghost. You know, please, spirit, tell me that, you know, this isn't this isn't what it's meant going to be, but only what could be. And he keeps turning around trying to buy more time because he's he the knows, spirit's like no, he <laughs> knows it's his grave. Yeah. He doesn't want the confirmation. The spirit just boom, boom, do, do, boom, boom. Oh, actually, I got the sleeves for this. <laughs> and then he just points and he wipes it down and it's his grave and please spirit no tell me all you know he just 
he's begging and pleading. He's like, I promise you at this point, I understand. I, I hold Christmas dear. And he's holding onto the robes of the ghost. And it wakes and up is, in his own bed. It's his bed sheets. Yep. Well, this is, this is different. I'm, what, what day is it? Where am I? And boy, I'm, I'm, I'm as light as a feather. I'm as giddy as a schoolboy. And, mm-hmm. oh, well, you, and he throws open the windows. You were there, boy. What day knocking, is it? By the way, knocking, knocking off Gizmo. Yes. <laughs> Gizmo? Gizmo, sorry. Don't get him wet. <laughs> Gonzo, Gonzo and Rizzo. Rizzo. Yeah. Sorry, Miss Charles Dickens. Dark, Mr. Dickinson. There we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Knocks him over. Now, yeah, just throws him away. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, we end up with uh, him talking down to finding the young rabbit that he had thrown the... The wreath who should have just taken that money and yeah. ran. Yeah, he says, hey, you know, do you know about that? Um, do you know about that prize? Was it the prize turkey? The block over. Well, you mean the one twice the size of me? Go buy it for me. I'll give you a shill- shilling. No, I'll give you five shillings. And he just throws a giant wad of cash. And if it wasn't the Christmas spirit... That kid would have just taken that money and run. Yep. That kid also feeling the Christmas spirit went and got the prize goose. Scroo- turkey. Yeah, turkey. Pardon me. Scrooge gets himself ready for the day. Gets out of his jammies. Then we end up with a nice kind of little closing song where he is going about town, spending his money, giving out little gifts, buying up every for shop that's open. his family and stuff Let's too. Let's ignore the fact that, you know, Scrooge was sold and the fact that there'll be no one to do business with. But here he is. <laughs> doing business with people? Yeah. <laughs> Here he is dropping C notes left and right. Whole Foods is still open. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you know, he's got but you know, he's got everything down to the cheeses for the Mises from the first song. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's just it's kind of great. And then, you know, he goes, he visits Fred during the song and he drops them off gifts and it's Fred and Clara. And then they take some food and they all they all end up at Bob Cratchit's house. Yes. And you know, he shoes them all the way and he's prepared to I, I like how I like how he gets everybody to go away, and then the kid with the turkey is still sitting right behind him, and he's he's trying to get himself back in character to be grumpy old Mister Scrooge, and he shoes him away. Said, like, "Hey, no, you going to? Hey, you're supposed to be at work today. Yeah, you gave it to me off. Why would I? Me, Ebenezer, Ebenezer Scrooge. Scrooge? <laughs> yeah, and that's the part. Yeah, and that's where and Nadia I, comes in. Yeah, and I, Bob Cratchit, and I am here to raise your salary." And I am here to raise you off the pavement. <laughs> I, I just, I just love, love that line. <laughs> this piggy raise you off the pavement and then pay off the mortgage on his house. Yeah. And, you know, would you, would you mind having Christmas with us? And everybody bursts into the house and the table grows magically another 30 feet in length so yes. the whole town can participate. <laughs> um, but the cool thing you pointed out too is that mm-hmm. everybody who was on set for that entire movie was at that end scene. There is, I was reading, when I was reading the trivia, there was one person missing. At oh. least it looked like it's uh, Clara, uh, Fred's girlfriend, wife, oh, Honey yeah, Bunny, yeah. Uh, is not there. She actually had a scheduling conflict and couldn't make the shoot. Oh, that sucks. Oh, oh well. Okay, everybody but one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say somebody died. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> no, well, you know, this was the, the first film after Jim Henson. There was a lot of, you know, kind of interesting. Expectations probably, too. Yep. To sure. hold up the Henson name and stuff. Well, hold it up, they did. I mean, again, making the best Christmas film, the best Christmas film, the best Christmas the Carol, best Christmas film a- adaption. Yes, yes, <laughs> the best Christmas Carol adaption. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I know we were we were we were kind of all all over the board, but this was uh, it's only this because we're fa- so excited about this movies. movie. Yeah, I know it's such a great film. There's so much. You to even enjoy bought Funko it. Pops. I did. This year. Really, I. Accidentally, I haven't touched Funko Pops in forever. I accidentally s- happened to see the Marley Bros as a two pack, and then of course I saw the back and was like, "Oh, they have a whole series. I must have them." And we sent a couple to your mom because we she did. Loves- yeah. If, if those of you out there, if you have any interest, get your Mr. Dickinson and Rizzo. <laughs> they come. They come. I'm in never going to live this down. You're not. not. They come in a <laughs> single. Dickinson. They come in a single box set. On they have an Amazon exclusive flocked version, so they're like fuzzy. That, that I would I would get it from me get that mm-hmm. one from Amazon, that that that's just me. Yeah, I 
I would give this movie a five out of five. It may it, lately we've been watching a lot more older movies, which has been making me oh, mad. You mean, you mean a lot more better movies? <sighs> it's been making me very mad about what recent cinema has been like. I mean, there are still a couple gems. Oh, for sure. Like we enjoyed Godzilla minus one. I got subtracted. Uh, yes, you did. Uh, that was a great. I I highly recommend anybody who has not seen that in theaters to go see that in theaters. Yes, we saw like, it specifically in the DFX, and it. Godzilla's roar just has that extra little bit of effect in DFX. I tell you what. Well, a friend of friend of the show, Lofty, has always said like if if we want good movies and stuff, the movies that do come out that are good, then we should be supporting them by going to the theaters mm-hmm. instead of just, hey, I'll just stream it. Hey, I'll just wait to stream mm-hmm. it. Like it, it, the only way we're gonna have anybody listen to to people that who is go also is by hours, box office numbers. But Godzilla is also three hours of free run. Yes, it is. It's subtitles. But you know what? As somebody, it was worth it. It was excellent. It was great. It, but the thing is, I was really worried that the subtitles were going to go too fast on it. But actually, it took its time. The dialogue was clear and stuff. So uh, I enjoyed it very much so. I But watching this movie and watching Braveheart and Three Amigos and going back and just watching older movies, I missed when there was a feel of like movie magic. You know what I mean? Like a feel of... of heart and soul and, well, and I f- value put into it instead of just being like, okay, let's put a movie together in two weeks, put it out there, put a movie together for two weeks. I'm not, I'm not saying it's two weeks, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like no, just I gotcha. actually taking the time for the set designs, the production value. Well, and I think that's so much of it though too. And I, that was something I was thinking about, something we had talked about is I really think that, I think there's too much of an attitude in current cinema where it is, you know, it's okay with the technology you have, we'll fix it in post. And so they they half ass they half ass it on the front side and they overspend on budget and they have to half ass it on the back end too. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so you never fix it in post. You never, you know, you're never gonna put in the full detail. And you know, I don't need somebody who's gonna half ass. I need them to give me one full ass. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're you're right. Like you actually put the effort into it on set mm-hmm. as best as you can. Like as best as you can, come close to it. And then if you do need to fix it in post, that's what post, that's what CGI and all this stuff mm-hmm. should be utilized for is like, hey, you know, we missed, we missed an explosion budget or, or something to that mm-hmm. extent. Not like, okay, 90% of the movie is going to be relied on post and CGI. Yeah. That, as a, I, I'm bored now with that kind of stuff. Going back and watching these, especially since I'm experiencing some of these movies for the first time. Mm. Like Braveheart, seeing it for the first time. Mm, you're going to have that up soon enough. Yeah. I <clears> loved <throat> that movie. Ah, uh, sorry, we're but all let's, over let's the back. T- but let's talk about the movie. Let's talk about what we love from the movie we just watched. Chris, Muppet, <laughs> Muppet Christmas. Back on track, yes. The Muppet Christmas Carol. One of the things that was great about it is you do kind of get the seriousness of A Christmas Carol in there. There are times where it's maybe too happy for children, but I saw it as a child, so I say do it to your child. <laughs> do it to your child. Yeah, go ahead. That yeah, is, don't, don't hold us liable. Listen I hold, to, I hold listen zero, to a guy who doesn't have kids. Zero just children look, here. Just let your, yeah. That is not parenting advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it does have a lot of great like Muppet humor in there in there as well. You know, this the Swedish chef does his thing. He's got the talking grapes. Mm-hmm. You've got the uh, I always love the very beginning the uh, boomerang fish salesman. Yes, you throw the fish away and it comes, comes right, right back. back. <laughs> you know that was great. Or uh, also in the beginning when uh, Charles Dickens and and Rizzo are at the apple stand and Rizzo's eating and he's like, oh, I'm causing scarcity. Supply and demand. <laughs> You know, it, it, there's all kinds of just great Muppet humor throughout. Or when he's, there's two things Rizzo hates, heights and jumping from them. So he jumps off the really tall gate and then he left his jelly beans on the other side. So he's small enough. He just walks through it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I I think if Rizzo is probably my, oh, I don't like know. Like the lamp, not the rat. Like the lamp, not I the rat. I really like Rizzo in this movie. I don't know if he's my favorite Muppet, but I, I really like him in this movie. No, well, Rizzo was Rizzo was the was the comedic, he was the true comedic effect the, the whole comedic time. Comedic relief, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He he was the he was the physical relief, comedic relief. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was uh overall I I would give this uh, five out of five Muppets. Five out of five Muppets. It's a good movie. It's not my favorite Christmas movie, but it is a good movie. And uh, just like Muppets is a great movie. If you like this episode, you should like subscribe. <laughs> Hit that notification bell for future Inside All Day And let episodes. us know down below what you, you know, if it's not. What's your favorite Muppet? Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Let me know your favorite Muppet. Favorite if it's Muppet. not a Muppet Christmas Carol, let me know what your favorite Christmas movie is. If it's a Christmas story, tell me where they heard you when you were a child. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm going to tie you to the chair and just make you watch it. Like, like hold you, your eyes. You, you're you're also going to waterboard me with yes, a Christmas story? Yes, I am going to waterboard you with a Christmas story. <laughs> well, with, on that note. Yeah, with that being said, have, I mean, have a Merry Christmas. God blesses everyone. Yes. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, Tiny Tim. <laughs>